Imagine this, in ancient Greece, Theseus, a mythical hero and king of Athens, owned a ship. This ship was made of wood, and as the wooden planks rotted, they were replaced with new ones. Over time, every single plank on the ship was replaced. Although the ship's form, shape and structure remained the same, all its material components eventually changed. A large question was raised through this scenario. Is it still the same ship as before, even after its materials have changed? This is the paradox of the ship of Theseus. In a way, it challenges our understanding of identity and asks whether something is defined by its form and function or by its material components. So, is it the same ship, or more broadly, how does an object keep its identity? Through its visual representation or its intended purpose, or neither. Like most paradoxes, the deeper you dig, the more intriguing and complex it becomes. The majority would argue the renovated ship isn't identical to the original one, but then consider this. If the ship's identity changes only after all its parts have been replaced, does that mean taking out just one plank won't change its identity? Moreover, if the ship of Theseus has every wood plank but one replaced, is it the original or a new ship? Some might argue that if the ship's materials changed all at once, it would be a different ship. But if the change happens gradually, as it did, it remains the same ship, just less identical as time goes on. This idea can be applied to humans too. If a small change in us like a single cell replacement doesn't change who we are, will a large cumulative change over time do? This introduces another paradox, the Sorites paradox. It arises when the removal or addition of a single element doesn't seem to change the identity, but the cumulative effect does. Opposing the idea that the ship of Theseus stays the same after being repaired, we're met with the philosophical principle, Leibniz's law. This law says that if two objects are identical, they must have all the same properties without any differences. So, even if the shape and structure are the same, if the material is different, the repaired ship is not the original one. However, this merely scratches the surface of the ship of Theseus paradox. In reality, we're overlooking one of the most intriguing parts of it. But before exploring that, we need to look at how philosophers throughout history have attempted to answer the topic of identity, specifically, what defines the essence of an item. There are two main perspectives on this paradox, those who believe in form and function and those who adhere to physicalism. Physicalism argues that the ship is not the same because its materials have changed. This view focuses on the physical parts, stating that since the original wood is gone, the ship is no longer the same. On the other hand, those who believe in form and function argue that the ship remains the same if its purpose and design are maintained. This suggests that the identity of an object is tied to its role and structure, not just its materials. Aristotle, an ancient Greek philosopher, introduced the concepts of formal cause, material cause, and end cause. The formal cause is the design or form of an object, the material cause is what it's made of, and the end cause is its intended purpose. For Aristotle, an object's essence or what it is is determined by its form or design. So, what made the ship of Theseus the ship of Theseus was its shape. In this view, the original and renovated ships are identical. Greek philosopher Heraclitus opposed Aristotle's belief that the original ship remains the same by saying, no man ever steps in the same river twice, for it's not the same river and he is not the same man. According to Heraclitus, everything is in a state of constant change, therefore the renovated ship cannot be identical to the original one. He would argue that the ship of Theseus, like a river, is always in a state of flux, and is never the same at any two points. This constant change implies that as the ship undergoes repairs and replacements, its identity evolves. John Locke, an influential philosopher, proposed a different view on identity. He believed that identity is based on the continuity of consciousness rather than the physical attributes. In other words, what makes something the same over time is its continuous purpose, not its material components. Applying Locke's perspective to the ship of Theseus, we can argue that the ship remains the same if its purpose continues, not the specific wooden planks it's made of. For example, if Theseus' ship continued to sail the seas, carrying out the same tasks and fulfilling the same roles as before, it would still be considered the same ship, despite all its parts being replaced. This idea can also be applied to humans. If a person maintains the same consciousness and purpose over time, their identity remains the same, regardless of the physical changes their body undergoes. 
Similarly, philosopher Derek Parfi argued that psychological continuity rather than identity is what matters. Applying this to the ship of Theseus, the ship's visual representation might be less important than its continuous purpose and function. But now that we've explored how philosophers have attempted to address the first part of the paradox, we must examine its further, more complicated aspects. Further complicating the issue, Thomas Hobbes expanded the paradox by asking about the identity of a ship rebuilt from the original parts. Imagine this scenario. Over the years, as the planks of Theseus' ship are replaced one by one, the old planks are not discarded, instead they're carefully preserved and stored. Eventually, enough of these old planks accumulate to reconstruct the entire ship. Now we have two ships, the one continuously maintained and repaired with new planks, and another one built entirely from the original, replaced planks. Which of these two ships, if either, is the true ship of Theseus? If the ship rebuilt from the original planks is considered the true ship of Theseus, it implies that the material substance defines identity. This aligns with the physicalist perspective, which holds that the material components of an object are what make it fundamentally the same over time. Conversely, if the continuously repaired ship is seen as the true ship of Theseus, it suggests that the identity is maintained through the continuity of existence and function, regardless of changes in its material components. If we accept that an object's identity can be based on either its original materials or its continuous function, it means we could have two things claiming to be the same at the same time. For Theseus' ship, if both ideas are correct, we end up with two ship of Theseus one made from the old planks and one maintained with new planks. Both can claim to be the original ship, creating a paradox that makes us question what really defines identity over time. But is it actually possible for two original ships to exist at once? Well, philosophically speaking, according to Leibniz's law, unless two objects are completely indistinguishable from one another, they aren't the same object. This means that strictly speaking, no two objects can be truly identical because there will always be some difference between them. In the case of the ship of Theseus, it's their material components. So, either one of them is the original ship of Theseus, or neither are. Overall, there may not be a definitive answer to this paradox, which is precisely why it remains a paradox. The ship of Theseus challenges us to consider how physical changes affect the identity of an object. As we wonder if a completely renovated ship is still the same as the original, we extend this question to broader contexts. What allows for identity to change or remain the same? This intricate relationship between physical alterations and the essence of identity is a question that still hasn't or may never be fully resolved. If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe as that would be amazing. As always, thank you for watching.